Hello! Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over the how you set up a plane detection scene in Unity. Um, this video is made with the assumption that you have already figured out how to create a build on your mobile device, whether it is a um, Android or an iPhone or iOS device. So um, if you're having issues with that kind of stuff, uh, that's a separate lesson from this. Um, so to uh, get started with AR Foundation, we have to make sure that we have a few things imported in the package manager. So if we open that up, um, the easiest way to find AR Foundation is to just search AR in the search bar here. So I already have it imported in, but uh, import that in. And then whether you're on iOS or Android, you would import in the AR Kit XR or the AR Core XR. So I have the AR Core one imported. Um, and yeah, okay. Once you have all of that stuff imported, you will also just give yourself a quick check to make sure that the scene that you are um, the scene that you are working in is in your build settings and that you have set up your settings so in Android you'll um, remember that there's like a few settings that we have to set um, mostly related to the um, other settings so we have to do things like removing the Vulkan and the graphics API and unchecking multi-threaded rendering and setting the package name so um, that kind of stuff, also setting the API level. So this is all for Android, but um, for iOS, there's slightly different settings. So do all of that and then close and um, make sure that you've switched over to whichever one is relevant. Close that. And um, in order, the, the two things that your um, AR scene needs in order to get started are a AR session and an AR session origin. So before we add those, I'm going to delete the main camera because um, that will get we'll get an AR camera added. So first thing I'm going to add in is the AR session. Um, this controls the like life cycle of the AR. It'll enable or disable AR on your um, device. And um, it's also necessary for the environment feature tracking. So the plane detection comes from the AR session. Um, and then we also add an AR session origin. Now, um, this will take um, basically all of the things that exist in space around you. Um, it, your, your phone will sense it, but doesn't know kind of the size and the scale. So this is a thing that kind of gives information about that and transforms it into the size of the world inside of Unity. So it relates like world size and Unity space size. Um, and so it, it makes sure things are like kind of scaled correctly. There is also below the AR session origin, there's this AR camera. And um, just in case, you know, it's just helpful to take that and tag it as the main camera. Um, it's not super necessary, but as we get into doing like UI and things like that, that'll be something that you'll want to do. So give it a main camera tag. Now, um, that's it. So basically with this, you could open, you could just open this up and you could put things in here and they would show up in AR on your phone. Um, but let's actually get started on the plane detection. So on the AR session origin, we're going to um, add a bunch of stuff. <laughs> So um, we're going to add a bunch of components here. So um, first we're going to enable plane detection by adding the AR plane manager component. So we're just going to search for AR plane manager. Now um, this requires a plane prefab, which we'll be creating in a little bit, but also notice the detection mode here is set to everything, um, which is both horizontal and vertical surfaces. I noticed that myself, um, it worked a little bit better, which is horizontal, um, but you could try it out both ways um, with everything or just horizontal and kind of see how you like it. Um, all right, so let's make that uh, AR plane, the plane prefab. 
So what I'm going to do first is going to just create an empty game object. We're going to rename this as AR plane. And I'm also going to just reset the transform so it's zero, zero, zero. Now um, we are going to add a bunch of components here. So um, first we want to add, I already have AR plane search, so AR plane. Um, I'm going to add the AR plane mesh visualizer as well. I'm going to add a mesh collider. This will give us the ability later to have things um, sit on top of the plane but collide with them. Um, I'm going to add in a mesh filter. This as well as a mesh renderer will allow our plane to be seen. And then um, what we're going to do is we want to create a material that will uh, let our plane show up. And so what I'm going to do here is, I already, already made one, but I'm going to make one from scratch. So I'm going to create a material. So because by default, our plane doesn't have any material on it, so we want it to look like something, right? Um, AR plane material. Alright, so, um, and let's check out the settings for that. So, first things first, I want it to be just like a little bit transparent. So, by default, the rendering mode is opaque, so I'm going to just change that to be transparent. And then I'll choose a color for it, um, so I'll click on this little color box next to albedo, and um, choose a color, so maybe I want it to be like a nice blue. Something like that, but then like mostly see through. So I'll give it like a maybe like a 50, uh, 50 percent transparent. So it'll like kind of show up, but then be, but be really nice and subtle. And um, so that'll be good. Transparent blue. So what I want to do here is then take this AR plane material and assign it to my mesh renderer, so I can just drag and drop it over there. Um, this next thing is not like necessary, but it is kind of fun. Um, I'm going to add a line renderer, and this will let us have a little outline around the outside of our um, planes. So you can kind of see where the edges of the planes that are being detected are. Um, so we have to change a few settings here. So first of all, the width. One is kind of a lot, so I'm going to set it to like 0 0.05, something pretty small, um, or maybe, maybe it's smaller. To like 0 0.01. Um, we can change the color. So um, I might pick something kind of nice here. Something that matches with my blue. So maybe I'll just do like a bolder blue color. Um, notice that this is a gradient editor. So I have a one color here and one color here. I'm just going to like remove this one at the end. I'm literally just clicking and dragging them off. And then I just have one solid color now. Okay, so we have a nice blue color. I'm going to set the corner vertices and end cap vertices from 0 to 4. That way they'll have just a little bit more vertices so they can be like rounded. Um, I don't want it to um, have shadows. So I'm going to turn cast shadows to off and receive shadows to disable. And then uh, we will also uncheck use world space here. And um, the material here, you can just set it to the default line material. So if you click this little circle, it'll bring up a window, and you can choose default line. Okay, so that is it. Um, so making sure that you have the AR plane, AR plane mesh visualizer, mesh collider, mesh filter, mesh renderer with the material and um, optional line render if you want the outline around the planes that are being detected. And then just to go back to the airplane material, it's literally two things we changed, rendering mode, transparent, and then the color is a transparent blue. Okay. Now I have this airplane that has all of its settings done. And what I want to do from here is turn it into a prefab. So a prefab is basically just drag and drop it down into your assets and then get rid of this one that is in the scene. So delete it if 
from C. And then now on the AR session origin, I'm going to uh, take the AR plane and put it in as the plane prefab. Okay, so now we can detect planes. So um, if you build and run this on your device as is, you can scan the room and planes should be showing up. Um, but what we're going to do from here is um, to create a script that will allow us to tap to place objects onto the planes. And um, I've already written this script, or I've, I didn't write it myself, found a script. Um, and um, so what I want to do is just walk through the script and I will be giving this to you. So we have the script called AR tap to place. Now um, we're going to be putting this script onto the AR session origin object. So I'm just gonna actually do that really fast. AR tap to place, just drag and drop it here. Nice. Now notice that when I dropped it on there, it also popped in its AR Raycast Manager script. And just note that is because it has this on top. So um, it's just, this is necessary to um, the functionality of the script. And so we just put it in at the top so that it will automatically add that component if it was not there already. So we have a, a few things to look at here. Um, first is a public game object called object to place. So what is the thing that you'll be placing on the planes once you have uh, tapped on them? Um, note that there is currently nothing here. Um, we have the private variable um, that is keeping track of the object that was spawned. We have this AR Raycast Manager, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And then we have this Vector2, which is keeping track of the touch position, as well as a list of the hits for the Raycast. Um, I'll talk about how Raycasting works in a minute as well, if you don't know. Um, so first we are just getting the Raycast Manager. And then we've created this Boolean function that is trying to get a touch position. So if our touch count is greater than zero, so if something is touching the screen, um, we are getting the position of the first thing that's touching. So typically you're touching with just one finger, so I'll get the first thing that touches. Um, and also return true. So I am touching, and here is the position. And otherwise, we default out the test position, and we're saying false. So in the update, if uh, we are not, so if it's the opposite of try get touch position, um, that means if this is false, then just return out. And if it's true, um, then we will look. Then we'll do some break casting. So. Um, we're looking at the touch position and the array of hits. So the way that raycasting works is that if you imagine that from the position that your finger touches the screen, shooting basically straight into the screen is an invisible line, um, an invisible ray. What the raycast manager looks like looks at is what objects is that line touching. So um, what is like directly underneath your finger when you're touching the screen and this, it can be more than one thing. There might be more than one plane kind of overlapping, but it will just look at the first one, the one that's on top. Um, and so it's like, okay, you hit this first object and you hit it right at this position. Um, and so it knows exactly where on that plane you have touched it. Um, one thing that's important here is that in order to have touches detected, an object needs to have a collider on it. And so you'll remember that on our AR plane, we have this mesh collider. So it does have a collider on it. And um, so we can detect where Raycasts are hitting it. So if we um, hit something, we check if the spawned object exists already. So if the spawned object is nothing, um, then we will instantiate a new spawned object at that place. So we're saying instantiate the object to place at that position at that rotation. Um, there is some other code here as well. So currently, if you just put this, 
it will just place one object down. It's saying, if the spawn object does not exist, put something there. Um, you could also add these lines in here. So if it does exist already and you tap again, it will move it to the new place that you tap. Um, so if you want to be able to reposition, you can do something like that. Or you can just say, you don't even have to have this if statement. You could just say, put something every time I tap down. So um, there's a little bit of logic here that just really just depends on your application. So this code here is saying, if there's no spawned object, put one down. Um, and then if you uncomment this, it's saying, if I tap again and it exists, um, move the currently spawned object to the new position. Um, so that's what this script does. So if I close this, this is on our AR session origin. The last thing that we need to do is just to set the object to place as uh, whatever game object that we are making. So this game object will be the thing that you are building that has the instructions for the users. So animations built in or whatever. Um, and we can talk more about that as well. But um, basically, yeah, you just you need this to be something that you're placing into the world. So um, I can just, for example, I can just make like a cube and we'll reset its position. And um, if I make that into a prefab, just a plain old cube, I can tell the AR tap to place that when I tap, I want it to put a cube down. So um, that's basically it. And now what you should get if you build and run this is that you can scan the room and see planes around. And then if you tap on them, it will put a cube down. And um, that's it. So um, that's the basics of how to set up plane detection. And once you get that working, this is where the creativity comes in. Um, what are you going to do? What are you going to put down? How are you going to show someone how to do things? Um, yeah. All right. That's it.